So there's been some new information about the newest bamboo printer coming out next month, and it's not what I was expecting. So I put out this video a couple of days ago about using multi-material supports to print complex models a little bit more easily. It was a follow-up to a video I did several months ago doing the same kind of thing, but I've had a little bit different success with it and I wanted to dive back into it. But more importantly, at the end, I wanted to try printing with TPU and using PLA or PETG supports for that. Well, my comments section's been active and a lot of people have been putting in their input, but one person in particular told me something a little bit strange. They said, don't Google Bamboo H2D. So obviously I Googled it. And that sent me down a rabbit hole, let me tell you. Apparently there were a couple of leaks about this upcoming bamboo printer that we're supposed to get in Q1 of next year. And I'm thinking they're pretty juicy. So here's where it all started. It's the Christmas season. Every company is trying to finish up their products and get them in front of people so we can get served the ads that make us want to buy them and put them under the Christmas trees. Let's just hope Santa delivers a little bit better than some of the shipping companies I've used recently. But all these new printers and products are competing for space on our screens. Meanwhile, Bamboo's been relatively quiet. You see, it's been about a year since they put out their last couple of printers, when they released the A1 Mini followed by the A1. And that was in last December, and they're about due for another release, you would think. And so of course the community was wondering why Bamboo hadn't showed up to the party yet. It's very unlike them, and we were getting a little bit concerned. Luckily, Bamboo went online and released a statement saying, Important updates. Our new top-of-the-line 3D printer launch moves to quarter one, 2025. We're taking the time to polish innovative features that will push the boundaries of consumer 3D printing and making sure the machine to be fully ready and supported worldwide. Worth the wait, we promise. And of course, people were excited enough at this prospect, but Bamboo actually acknowledging that there is another printer coming, people were stoked. But was it wasn't gonna be enough. See, you've got printers like the Creality K2 already shipping and being delivered, and the reviews coming in on it are great. Is this new Bamboo machine going to be so game-changing that it'll overcome this lag? Well, that was enough to start the rumor mills that had already been churning anyway, so there was a lot of speculation about what features we were going to see. First and foremost of which is going to be bigger build volume. See, last year when Bamboo began teasing what turned out to be the A1 series of printers, everybody was figuring that was going to be the bigger build volume printer. People were hoping for a big, enclosed, super fast, reliable, massive printer. People were wrong, baby. You like that? Instead, Bamboo released the A1 Mini, which was open, bed slinging, still fast, still reliable in quality, but pretty far from what anybody would have expected even after Bamboo had said, bed slingers are silly, we're not doing that. And of course, people were not stoked about this one. But the A1 was also released soon thereafter, and both printers were widely adopted and find their way into lots of YouTube videos and maker spaces and all sorts of stuff now. So obviously, it's been successful. Even though the A1 had that strain relief issue with the cable going to the heat bed that caused some problems, it seems like they bounced back okay. I mean, I've got three A1 minis and they're fantastic. But this new one, this has got to be the big one, right? Like, it's got to be the big one. What else could they do? I mean, by the sounds of it, it's really going to push what we think a consumer 3D printer should be able to do, along with being big and fully enclosed, likely a heated chamber, like all the things that we should expect it to have, right? But is it going to have, like, super hot print temperatures, like it can print peak? Is it going to be like a tool changer situation where you can have like a million tool heads on there to print all sorts of crazy stuff? Like what else could Bamboo bring to the table to dominate the space again? Well, that was kind of where we were until the last couple of days when we got a little bit more information. See, that one comment led me to comb through Reddit and other very reliable, reputable sources. And uh, here's what I found. You may have seen this leaked photo of a pamphlet either packing inside the machine or advertising materials for the machine or something like that. And then I think earlier this year there were a couple of these photos which are patent filing photos that Bamboo put in. I don't think these ones are very recent. I think they're maybe more like months ago. So again, this stuff's all speculation, but this is kind of stuff that's been gathered up now. But let's talk about the pamphlet first. There's a couple of things that we can glean just from this little bit of information on this photo. So first of all, on the surface, we get package dimensions, the size of the machine, probably a new AMS by the looks of it, 
and the name of the new flagship model. The name's the H2D combo, so maybe it's beginning an H series of printers, whether it's the H2 series, and they'll have a cheaper option, and then this is the tippy top one. Who knows? And if that pamphlet flyer deal is anything to go off of, the build volume it's quoting at the bottom is like, giant. Especially for something that appears to be fully enclosed. 492 by 514 by 626. Where do they even get those numbers from? Like, the K2 is 350 by 350, right? And this one's 492? I don't know about that. But the other piece of exciting news that you get from this piece of paper here is a new AMS. The AMS Pro 2, or AMS 2 Pro. What makes it Pro? I get the 2. It's the second iteration of it. What's so professional? Looking at the picture, it looks like there's something kind of on the bottom of the AMS or something that's been added underneath. So maybe a heater slash dryer situation that's built in. Otherwise, the rest of the packaging looks like typical bamboo. It's likely a sleek metal frame, nice polished enclosure, glass panels if I had to guess, super sick touch screen on the front. And based on the size comparison between the AMS sitting on top of it and the machine, that thing's gonna be big. Because if you look at the regular AMS on top of an X1 Carbon or P1S, it's just a little bit smaller than that is. And you look at this picture and it's like quite a bit smaller. But this picture is just the tip of the iceberg. Let's take a look at those patent filings a little bit here and see what else we can connect. Now it's important that I again stress that this is just speculation. And as I understand it, these diagrams have already been floating around for a little bit. So once again, we're just connecting dots here nothing set in stone. But in the context of this flyer, it looks like this machine's likely a dual extruder setup. So H2D, maybe the two is two extruder, or the D is dual, or H is really hot. I don't know. But it's likely not an IDEX, as in not independent dual extruders. From what we're seeing, it's going to have a single tool head, with a dual nozzle setup and two inputs, likely, probably. Judging by this diagram here, it looks like they'll both be mounted to a single chassis that then will move with some gearing and stuff to kind of position each nozzle that's in use into service and then out of service. So two nozzles is gonna allow for color changes like we're already used to, but also multi-material stuff's gonna get a lot easier. But to go with that tool head, we're gonna need a fancy little AMS hub on the back. Because if you've got two inputs going to your tool head, well, that hub's gotta have two outputs. Luckily, it looks like it does. You've got your four inputs on the one side, which shows us that you can probably still daisy chain all of these AMSs together. And then two outputs with a little selector, actuator type deal that determines which input of the tool head gets the filament. So why do you think they would go with a dual extruder? And why is that good paired up with an AMS? AMS does multicolor and dual extruder does multi stuff. So putting them together would be twice as good. Well, I think they're addressing one of the biggest criticisms of the AMS ecosystem, the filament changing and the purge waste. So each color change currently, the tool head has to stop printing on the model, go cut the filament, retract the filament, put new filament in, purge so it cleans the nozzle and you get a complete color change before it can then get back to printing on the model. So that all takes quite a bit of time, the insertion of the filament, the retraction of the filament, but importantly the purging to create the color change creates a lot of waste. With the dual extruder system there's at least an opportunity for these filament changes to go down a little bit faster. You see, while one extruder is printing, the other one can be primed. So filament retraction can happen while the other one's printing. The filament insertion can happen while the other one's printing. And if your model's only got two colors, there's no need to do any purging because you're just loading up both nozzles. No cut, no retract, no reinsert, potentially no purge. Could be good. Although this isn't a tool changer, this is probably gonna be as close as we can get without actually doing a tool changer. And potentially, one fancy tool head could be a lot cheaper than, say, five individual less fancy tool heads. And we're almost gonna be doing the same stuff inside of that one tool head, if they're smart about it. Who knows? 
because you see the other benefit of doing this dual extruder thing is when you have one extruder, the current setup, the multi-material stuff's kind of difficult. So even in the last video when we were doing PLA with PETG supports and vice versa, if your PLA is printing at 230, for example, and your PETG is printing at 250, that's pretty close, but that's a 20 degree swing that the same hot end has to maintain in between color or material changes. And then if you wanted to do any bigger swing than just 20 degrees, which is a really small swing, I don't know. Is that even gonna work? Now, when you've got two nozzles inside of one tool head, I think you can get away with a little bit more. Cause even if you've got one nozzle printing a really cold PLA at like 215, for example, you can have that other nozzle printing something at like 270 and it's not gonna be a problem. One of these diagrams does kind of point to the fact that there's gonna be different cooling fans, potentially cooling different nozzles. So if you've got two nozzles right next to each other and one's really hot and one's a lot cooler, well, you're gonna need something to keep the heat from this one to going to that one. Otherwise, you're gonna get nozzle clogs. Potentially, they're gonna be smart and be cooling one nozzle to prevent the heat creep going up the filament. I don't know. Again, speculation. We're just here having fun. So no, it's not a tool changer, according to this information, but it's pretty close to a tool changer. Kinda. So here we are. It'll be interesting to see what actually comes out whenever they do release this printer, if it's in a month or if it's in another three months. But what do you think? Is it truly gonna be big? Are they gonna come straight out of left field like they did when they released bed slingers last time? Is this fancy tool head gonna be a terrible maintenance nightmare? And more importantly, what are the early adopters gonna be burned with while Bamboo works out all the kinks? Or is Bamboo truly working out all the kinks right now? And how compatible are the AMS and AMS2 Pro 2 gonna be with each other? Am I gonna be able to use my three AMSs and a new AMS to do four AMSs running in parallel? I've got links below to everything that I was drawing my information from. Again, speculation. It's all just the internet saying stuff, so anything could be the case right now. But I'll be interested to see how well this video ages as this printer comes out. Maybe we're bang on. Maybe it's something crazy and we have no idea. Hop in the comments though and let me know what you think or if you've got any other information. I'll be following it. Bye.